Hi, and welcome to Total Recall. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. And I'm Matt Zioli. And you can follow me on Twitter at Tom Scholey or on Instagram at Tom underscore Scholey. You can follow me on Instagram at Cinema underscore Tune. And you can follow the show on Twitter at Total Recall Show or on Instagram at Total underscore Recall underscore Show. So, what, it's, what's, what's on your mind, <laughs> Matt? It's... It's, I think it's one of the most uh, special holidays of the year. That's right, it's November. It's November. Um, something's coming. I think we're in the midst of it right now. Um, tea's giving. Tea giving? Tea's giving. Tea giving. Yeah. And, and that's when we celebrate uh, the career of Mr. T. Mr. T. Lawrence Tiro. <laughs> Tiro, yes. Uh, famous uh, bodyguard, bouncer, boxer, football player, uh, wrestler. Wrestler. Um, s star of uh, cartoon series, yes. movies. We love Mr. T, and mm -hmm. uh, what a way to kick off T's giving here. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Mr. T was was my hero. Like uh, as a kid, I was you know like the right age for like the A Team and uh, uh, Rocky Three, you know, and, and and the Mr. T cartoon, you know. So like all these things were hitting. Uh, you know, kind of like one after the other, and and yeah, Mr. T, like I just, uh, you know, like he was, uh, you know, he was like my hero. Like I wanted to be <laughs> like Mr. T, and and I, I, you know, the the first autobiography or biography, nonfiction, whatever that I ever read was Mr. T's, um, uh, his autobiography. I forget what it was called. It was called, like, you know, they call me T or something. It was, <laughs> That's amazing. Something like that, but. That was the first, and like that was where I learned like oh his name isn't really Mr T it's Lawrence <laughs> Tiro he's got like a whole uh, you know he's you know uh, got a whole backstory like he comes out of this tradition that like I don't know if it's like an eighties thing specifically or or if it's like a larger tradition but like where it's like somebody where you're not sure where like fiction ends and reality begins I you know? I, I love it they're, they're um he he's in the movie. Like that, and then he's on the you know you see him on the street like that. Yeah, because well. there's not like a big like wardrobe change. Yeah. Like when, when he's on like the Merv Griffin show <laughs> as Mr. T, he's dressed the same as as he is as Clubber Lang or B. A. Baracus on the A Team. I I I you're right, Tom. I don't think there's a cooler person. <laughs> yeah. That's ever been than Mr. T. Like you see, he like steals the show. This like amazing <laughs> look, like like so unique and like. You, you can kind of, um, like, parse it and, like, you know, look at the individual pieces of, of his look and where it comes from. But it kind of, it, it, like, it becomes, like, something where it's, like, the, the, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Like, like there's, yeah, like, there really wasn't anybody before Mr. T or after Mr. T that, that you know, fit that mold. Um, he, uh, I think probably one of the first things I saw him in was probably Rocky Three. I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, also at the same time, he was in the A team, so it yeah. was like a combination of both. And like, you know, I I think he stole the show on the A team. He's like the star of the A. -team. He stole the show of, of the like, yeah. It was a and, and uh, I recently watched a Merv Griffin interview with uh, Mr. T, and like Merv Griffin's kind of like pumping him up and, and saying like, you know, well, well, you're you know, you're like the star of the A-Team, and he's, he, like, kind of stops, he's, like, very, always very humble, and he stops him, and he's, like, actually, you know, George Papard <laughs> is the star, and, you know, I'm, I'm, like, a supporting actor or whatever, but, yeah, like, like, they might as, like, when, when I was a kid, they might as well have called it the Mr. T show, you yes. know, like, that's, that's who, that's who, like, we were coming to it for, and another, like, like, Mr. T has sort of, like, a gateway to literacy for me, like, yeah. reading his biography, also, like, you know, probably one of the first, like, books without pictures, <laughs> That I ever bought yeah. was the um, novel is the eighteen novelization. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> like that's amazing. I think when the show is over, I'm going to be uh, seeking this out. Probably, I'll, I'll be ordering that on Amazon like today. <laughs> yeah, the one thing I keep um, sort of, kind of like trying to decide whether or not to get is like the Mister T doll. There was a Mister T doll in the eighties, and I got it for Christmas. Uh, you know, uh, when it came out, and I was so excited. It was, and on the uh, on the commercial, like you'd see the kids 
kind of like beating each other up with. They'd like make his fists go and kind of like threaten each other or hit each other. And like, you know, I, you know, like that, that, I, I wanted to do that. Yes. I wanted, it was almost like Mr. T becomes your bodyguard. It was like you have like my buddy and then this is like my bodyguard, you know, you can have him uh, like beat people my, up for you. My buddy. They remember that? The, my he buddy. beats up my yeah. buddy. My, but shows up like on like a tricycle or like a bike come down the hill that Mr. T's doll like starts pum pummeling him. Yeah, so I had the Mr. T doll and he didn't last very long because it got him on Christmas and then like Christmas night, I guess I like left him on the floor and the lights were off or whatever and my mom stepped on him. Oh my gosh. And so broke his arm. Oh no. So his arm oh came off. Oh my gosh. And like I like, you know, glued his arm back, you, you know, using like Elmer's glue, you yeah. know, like, like a kid idea of like how you're going to fix your toy. <laughs> I think I've done the same repair job. <laughs> then it would be like okay for a while then it would break. Fall off again. Yeah, so like. I was, and I, you know, never, I never got a replacement Mr. T. So I had like, a, like a one-armed Mr. T basically for, you know. I'm jealous. I'm so jealous. And I'm still obsessed now with uh, a My Buddy commercial where he gets pummeled into submission. They had the Mr. T doll, which like, was like awesome. Like he had like the earrings, he had gold. He had uh, the, the bracelets. the bracelets, he had um, like the, the denim, denim overalls. Bed. Yeah, and, and the uh, the socks like pulled up and, yes. the, and the Chuck Taylors. Um, what a look. Yeah, yeah, a great look. Yeah, iconic. And then the um, and then they had the B.A. Baracus doll, which I didn't have. Uh, it was much less deluxe. It was more like a, like a Star Wars size or like like G.I. Joe scale. I think, yeah, I think he had like the G.I. Joe articulation. Oh, nice. Yeah, like, uh, man, I would kill to see, like, uh, you know, be playing with my G.I. Joes. And, like, you look, I'm like, is that Mr. T in there in, like, the infantry? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I I just remember like I remember the theme song to the uh, commercial for <laughs> the the A Team toys. Well, how does that? Work? <laughs> it was um, uh, they're the A Team. You know they're soldiers of fortune. <laughs> they're the A Team, helping people in need. You can pretend that you're Hannibal, <laughs> Murdoch, or Face, or maybe be a Baracus. You know each one is an ace. Uh, each amazing. sold separately. By Galoob, or like whatever. <laughs> Tom, that's amazing. But I, another thing too, I'm now obsessed with like, like you know, little kids playing with a George Pappard. <laughs> yeah, it's like I don't think anybody wanted the, the anybody but the, the you know, oh, and the van. You know, they had the oh van. my gosh, the, and like um, B A was always building stuff on the A T. He was like the um, they're like. We're fighting the bad guys. We need you to armor up this like vehicle, and he was like their guy that did that. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was kind. Of, I mean, that's one of the tropes of the A team. If you haven't seen it, is like there's always a scene where they get captured by the bad guys, and then the big guy like <laughs> locks them in a shed, but it's like a tool shed filled with like uh, power <laughs> drills and things, and then they build some kind of like war machine that they come rolling. It's, it's kind of like the origin of uh, Iron Man. Oh know? yeah, <laughs> but it was every episode of the A team, like. The bad guy's like, damn it, why did we lock him in that warehouse with an arc welder? <laughs> like, one of the greatest moments in cinema history, I think, is during um, uh, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, when Pee-wee is pouring the Mr. T cereal. Like he oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I pity the poor fool who doesn't eat my cereal. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't eat my cereal. And I, I don't, I always got, like, like a panic attack, because I think he pours the cereal all, he's like, <laughs> Like pouring it all over his plate. Then he, I don't know if he, he just picks them up on his fork. I don't know if he actually eats it. Right. And I was disappointed because yeah. he really didn't eat any of the meat. Yeah, he makes this enormous <laughs> breakfast and then takes two bites, which I think is like the joke. Like, it's like Pee Wee's very small and like that's, you know, he doesn't have a great diet. He's not, he's not bulking up. Um, the Pee Wee Herman, it's interesting you bring him up because it's like the same era. And Pee Wee Herman was kind of cut from the same cloth as Mr. T, where, like, I wasn't sure, like, is this a real guy? Is this fictional? Because, like, yeah, he'd show up on David Letterman, and it's Pee Wee Herman, you know, and then and then he'd be, you know, doing weird stuff in a movie. And, um, and like, um, Mr. T, like, the cartoon, like, of course, like, as an adult, you realize what's going on. It's, it's like, it's like wrestling, it's, it's kayfabe, it's like... You know, you're putting out this this story as though it's real, and and you, and you play it straight, um, and and, and it, you're purposely blurring the lines between truth and fiction. But like the the cartoon, the Mr. T cartoon, is like kind of an interesting point because it, it it's Mr. T. Like that's his name in real life. That's the name of the character. He's not B A. He's not 
uh, Clubber Lang. He's Mr. T, and he's driving a bus. Or he's not driving the bus, but he's like sort of the the chaperone of a team of gymnasts. And um, but then and it's bringing he, a tear to my eye over your tongue. <laughs> like, he's also a superhero. Like he, 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 like he's just doing these like tremendous. Uh, th- you know, he's like skiing and, and like doing these like backflips and like evading missiles that are being launched at him and stuff and and uh knocking you know uh stalactites off of the ceiling and pinning the bad guys with it so it it, it like it it makes these like larger than life things seem seem like very real at an at an age when you are sort of unclear on on exactly what's what's real and what's not great point on, on him you know going as mr t in the cartoon and yeah like just you describing like the, the plot of the Mr. T cartoon. It's getting me choked up yeah. over here. Like Mr. T chaperoning a, a team of gymnasts solving. Like, yeah, and, car- and he and he has a dog uh, with uh, who also has a mohawk, and I think he has like chains. Too, he like, does instead of a collar. Oh my yeah. gosh! And then there's a little kid who it's kind of like. That must have been like the um, viewer identification character because that was totally me. It's like yeah. this little kid who wants to be Mr. T and he's got like the full outfit and he talks like Mr. T and he's, you know, like, like that's what he, like when I grow up, I want to be Mr. Mr. T. You know, that, that like treat your mother right. Like, yeah, like, like your mother is sacred to Mr. T and he doesn't want to hear anybody make fun of anybody's mother. And, um, and like I remember when he would go on Howard Stern, that's like how they would kind of like I saw get, on Stern. Uh, yeah. Oh my god! But they, that's how they would get him to like flip out. Is like that's like his kryptonite. <laughs> is if they would like make fun of somebody's mother, you know? And, and, and you know, Mr. T would just have none of it. You know? Yeah. So on Stern, they. I'm sorry. Because yeah, you, you right? attack one person's. His, 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 it was very clear that if you attack one person's mother, you're attacking everybody's mother. Like that's so like yeah, when you're doing the dozens. Like he he feels like the mother should be like off limits. Uh, uh, do, do they push his buttons? Mm-hmm. On the stage? Yeah, you gotta hear. Yeah, the st- <laughs> like those were some pretty legendary, and those were those were kind of like after his heyday, you know. And, and it was like like I was older at that point, and I was like very happy to like see Mr. T yeah. like return, and um like that that's something that I kind of wondered because like we're talk- talking about like uh uh you know Rocky three, and, yeah. and we'll we'll have to do like a Rocky episode. Oh, I'd love point. to. It, you know, and I, I recently revisited the whole Rocky series, like all the way up through like the Creed movies. Yeah, just a great series. But like watching um, Rocky three and seeing like what like Mr. T gives an amazing performance in there, like like just tor- like um, amazing, like just great. It's 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 unreal, and like you see him on the screen, and you're like. You know, Stallone's like the superstar, but you're like, this guy has about a hundred times more ch- charisma just s- standing there on screen than Stallone. Does. Yeah, like I think, um, like once, uh, and and maybe the the Creed series has sort of like you know run its course, but I, like I'm gonna see the Lang series where that's yeah, you know. so good. <laughs> the, they I, please, <laughs> yeah, like I want, like I want to see like what. <laughs> what you know clubber lang is up to and and you know maybe he has like a son or a daughter who's you know like a contender you know that sounds that's perfect like stallone is kind of like uh burt reynolds that like he has his like his his friend like his group yeah, of like yeah dom de and, and lonnie anderson <laughs> yeah. and you know the whole crew like he still is friends with like ned Beatty. Ned and, like, <laughs> oh my god like uh uh Stallone's still like friends with Dalton Lundgren, and mm-hmm. that's how he pulled the Expendables together. Mm-hmm. So, you got to think that maybe, yeah. Why wasn't Mr. T in the Expendables? So this is the question. <laughs> like, he's so amazing in Rocky Three, and you see this, and you're like, this is the beginning of like a, a real career. Yeah. And it's like, like, and Mr. T was was like just such a big deal um, in like the early '80s, and then it's like, what happened? Like, why did he fall off the map? And so then we're we're watching the the video of of treat your mother right, and I'm thinking maybe it's that <laughs> maybe it was like he, that was like one thing too far like trying to go into music, yeah like in uh well, like Dirk Diggler and uh, Boogie Nights yeah. trying to do a like a music career yeah something. it's and it's it, like also, everyone tries to go there like it's almost like it's it's a disrespect towards like rap 
uh, you know, as an art form, because it, it, it was kind of like, oh, we'll just do a rap. Anybody yeah, can rap. Yeah. It's, it's easy. We'll just do it. Like, it's, it's so, and, and then you see what happens when somebody who isn't, uh, you know, isn't a rapper, rapper you know, goes, goes for it. <laughs> The, the amount of chain, like, I love his chain work. <laughs> yeah, I, um, like, I drew Mr. T recently uh, for Jacktober, which was, like, um, you know, the, the month of October. Every day, uh, you know, there was a different drawing prompt for a different, like, Jack Kirby-related, uh, you know, character or idea or something. And so one of the days was Mr. T, because Jack Kirby was the lead designer on the Mr. T cartoon. I, that's amazing. Yeah, and, and I, I kind of put him in that list for that reason, but also because of like my personal connection. To I was so excited when I saw him on the Jack Tober prom list. I was like, oh yeah. So like drawing him, it was like, okay, yeah. How do you make sense of those chains? Like, how do you you know figure out like the cartoon? It like, and it, it's a lot of really cool shapes and and uh, you know symmetry and asymmetry. Like it, it was it was a lot of fun. It, like the cycle. I love the prompt those, that yeah. you did. It was so good. It, it was just like it was like one thing after another. You had you had like the A team, and then he'd he'd be like the the guest star on TV shows. So he was um, he was on Different Strokes, okay, and then um, Gary Coleman, uh, again, like you know models himself after like Mr. T is his hero, and and Mr. T is playing Mr. T in this. I, I think I, I think it. like Mr. Drummond is getting like death threats, and so he hires Mr. T as his bodyguard. Like that thing of Mr. T. Like being a real life bodyguard who kind of parlayed that into celebrity, like that was that's like so great because then that became the storyline. Anytime he showed up on a show, that would be the story. It would be like, oh, so and so is hiring him as a bodyguard. So Mr. Drummond hires him as a bodyguard, and then uh, Arnold uh, Gary Coleman is like sort of infatuated with, like has like hero worship for him, and so dresses up like him, but then also like gives himself the haircut, and 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 then like he gets in trouble for that for like you know giving himself a mohawk. And then, like, at the end of the episode, Mr. Drummond is like, you know, what are we going to do? Like, you can't, like, go to school every day with this mohawk. So Mr. Drummond says, like, you know, we're going to get you a wig. You're going to, like, wear a, like, wear a wig uh, to school until your hair grows back. So, like, that was the way they explained why, like, the next episode of Different Strokes, he didn't still have the mohawk. It's like, you, you know, like... <laughs> Because yeah. that's how TV... Like, like TV wasn't... They needed an out. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it wasn't, like... Um, like friends or something where like you could have a sitcom that was also a like a continued story you had you had to make each episode like its <laughs> own discrete standalone thing <laughs> I, I'd, i'll have to revisit that um uh, mr t autobiography because i do wonder now like how much because like as a kid i assumed like oh well, this is just the you know like I, why would it be anything but the, the whole truth and nothing but the truth but now i'm thinking like how much of it is like just in written in character? I'm I'm going to be starting to read that within the next like seventy two hours here, <laughs> and I got to see uh do this little eBay checking, see if there's a Mr. T doll. Yeah, on I've there. seen a bunch of the <laughs> Mr. T dolls up there, so it it is uh it's tempting. Um, and, and like another TV appearance he did, it was like almost an identical storyline. It was um, it was Silver Spoons. Oh man, Ricky Schroeder. Ricky Schroeder and like Ricky Schroeder's dad, uh, Edward Stratton, I think. Um. He, I guess, was getting death threats too, and so he hired <laughs> Mr. T to be his bodyguard. Um, I, for, I don't think, um, I don't think Ricky, maybe uh, Ricky probably did. Like that, probably he probably did like get the the, the Mr. T look done in too. Maybe, maybe not the mohawk, but uh, while well, I'm seeking out all these like all the uh, the T guest spots for a, a proper T's giving <laughs> celebration. Yeah, this is this is like what it was because like I don't know, like I don't know, you know what people's recollections are of Mr. T, but it's like, there was a moment in time where he was just, he was just everywhere, you know? I, um, I think the Total Recall show was getting some threats. Mm -hmm. I do, I have, uh, booked, I have, uh, <laughs> surpri I have a surprise. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've hired Mr. T as the, the, as the Total Recall total bodyguard. bodyguard. And, he's gonna, <laughs> and there he is, right there. <laughs> there he is. He's just off camera. Thank you for being here, Mr. T. Thank you for. I feel safer yeah. and protected. <laughs> Rocky Three is is in, in some ways like the the apotheosis of the the Rocky series because it's like, yeah. um, it's it's just got like it's got like all the ingredients and it's got so much gloss on it. Like, there's something about like part threes in the '80s. Like, they're not necessarily the best installment of the series, but they're the most like <laughs> overblown and glossy and like like everything but the kitchen sink. Like, you got. Um, 
uh, you got like Rocky is on the Muppets. Oh yeah, and it's like footage from like Sylvester Stallone actually being on the Muppets, but they're playing it like it's Rocky on the Muppets, and then which I think like I think the that episode of the Muppets, they do like. Like, some of the Muppets are confused as to whether he's, like, Rocky like, or Sylvester Stallone. Like, they do call him Rocky. And, and you've it. mentioned uh, about Mr. T doing, like, it's like kayfabe. It's like, I think Stallone has kind of, like, blurred the lines between Rock. Like, he's yeah. like, hey, hey, it's me, Sylvester Stallone. No, I don't know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that was me doing a, 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 a yeah. Rodney Dangerfield, actually. Yeah. I know how to buy it. Hey, it's me. It's me. Polly, here's a... We're getting into uh, who, who's the boss, Tony Danza. <laughs> hey, oh, oh, wait. <laughs> Angela. Angela, the Bauer agents. <laughs> there was also like another thing uh, that might have been lost to time. Or, I mean, I guess not. Like pro probably all this stuff you could find on YouTube. Probably every single thing I'm mentioning you could probably find on YouTube. But um, it, was, it was like a made-for-TV movie called The Toughest Man in the World where it's, it's Mr. T and he's going to enter the Toughest Man in the World competition. And, like, the climax is, like, this, like, obstacle course that, like, they all have to go through and, Mr. and, and you have to get to the end of it. And then you have to fight, uh, like, like you have to fight the, the reigning toughest man in the world who was a, a character called Tanker Weems. <laughs> and uh, I, for, I forget what Mr. T's character's name was. Oh, it was Bruise. His name was Bruise. <laughs> and he's, like, a bodyguard. And I think there was, like, an orphanage. Like, he, like, was, like, the chaperone of an orphanage or something. <laughs> Now I'm getting choked. I'm over the plot of this TV. Movie. Like, Tom, so if I am if I'm checking into a hotel, I'm it's going to be under the name. T t was it Tanker t Weems? Yeah, Tanker Weems was the rant, but then Bruce was the challenger. It took me a while to figure out, like as a kid, that his name wasn't Bruce. It was Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Tanker Weems. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and so like I t I taped the toughest man in the world. I taped that uh off of TV and like just you know. Watched it to death. Watched like basically had it memorized, the, the, and I called it the Mister T movie. Like I did. That's <laughs> awesome. The Mister T movie. That's amazing. Like uh, I've got a laundry list of Mister. <laughs> like it's, it's T's giving. That's what T's giving. Yeah. We um when you're when it's we're, when you're in the midst of T's giving, we uh you know you indulge in all things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You, you gorge. It's, gorge. Like, it's like Thanksgiving. You <laughs> like unbutton <laughs> your pants <laughs> with all this. <laughs> Mr. T content. I've got to take my belt out by a few notches here. You, you got your Mr. T marching orders. I've got my marching orders. Like, you know, there's even um, there's even a Mr. T video game. There's there's like there was like a Rocky Three video game. I forgot about yeah. that. What, 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 what's his, I think was it was like for the for... Sega maybe or. But yeah, anywhere Mr. T shows up, it becomes a Mr. T show. Like he he pulls focus. The the, the right. one I was thinking of it was the Sega Master System. But then there's all it like predates that it's like for the Coleco Adam the Coleco Vision oh and gosh. Adam and so, so it it predates that and then I guess they like whenever the Coleco Vision and the Adam went away they kind of like ported it to <laughs> the uh, to the Sega Master System and I guess called it Rocky instead 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 of like tying it to a particular Rocky movie. the two mega cartridge <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah Sega Master System like it, yeah that was. Uh, that, that was like a sexy video game system. That <laughs> yeah, was, like, it was. Like, 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 like I had the NES, but like the Sega Master System, like called to me. Like it definitely, you yeah. know, it, it, uh, the um, you know had like a a larger palette, color palette, which kind of made made things like look a lot uh, uh, juicier. I remember uh, being at like Toys R Us, and I, you know, they would have. I, I remember seeing some Master Systems mm -hmm. in there for my. E so when I got my Eagle Scout award, I was in like on my senior year. Um, my friend's mom was in charge of sending out like, like award letters, mm -hmm. and she came up to me and was like, "Matt, we didn't hear back from Mr. T." <laughs> 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 like I remember, and I was like, "I forgot all about that," because I, you know, we I think we reached out to you seriously reached out we to did, Mr. T. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I thought I thought you were doing like like a bit. <laughs> um, that uh, that um, reminds me that um, you know coming soon. Uh, uh, we talked about it in in our um, in our uh, Indiana Jones episode that Steven Spielberg, a, a, a Boy Scout himself, yes, Eagle Scout, Eagle, Eagle Scout, Scout. Um, created the the um, the uh, uh, the requirement. Like he he yeah. wrote up the requirements for the movie making merit yep. badge. So um, 
Matt, a, an Eagle Scout himself, is is going to. I never got the badge. Yeah, he never got the badge, so he's gonna go. He's gonna do all the steps, and we're gonna document it here. He's yeah. gonna go through all the steps and earn his uh, movie making, making uh, merit badge. badge. And hopefully, we we'll, we'll make um, Steven Spielberg uh, proud. Yeah, with... yeah, and, and maybe a brand, maybe he can pin it, pin on, it or sew it. I think you sew the merit badges on. You can sew it on <laughs> your sleeve. Yeah, it was, yeah, um, yeah. That's exciting because you know. Um, I only I, I only got as far as Cub Scout, so if if I'm able to do the movie making badge too, I'll, I'll do it too. Yeah, but we I don't know if I'm, I'm I certified. You can definitely yeah, you're definitely um, certified to do this, and uh, yes, yeah, Spielberg created those requirements, so well, hopefully we'll um, be up to snuff for him. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he doesn't show up and like rip it off more. <laughs> like he's like <laughs> like uh, you know some kind of uh, episode of Gomer Pyle or something. <laughs> he's like, uh, you make me sick. <laughs> and like rip <laughs> it rips like not only it just yeah it rips your whole, whole sleeve, sleeve off. off. Yeah, he, ta he takes he takes your other badges with him. I'm like Spielberg's stronger than you think. So yeah, so Mr. T he. King of the like it's it's one of those like this is the '80s this is like the era of like the one hit wonder or whatever like uh, you know you're first you're hot and then you're not and like Mr T was like king of the world and then like disappeared it seemed like like it seemed like he was just gone for 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 a stretch kind kind of like um kind of like we talk about like Star Wars it was kind of like after Return of the Jedi came out it was kind of like wait where'd Star Wars, Wars go? go it was like the most important <laughs> thing in my life where where did it go and like it was like right around the same time Mr T like disappears. And I just, like, I haven't found a good answer for why that happened. And I guess sometimes you don't even need an answer. Sometimes it's just, like, that fickle Hollywood or whatever, you know. And, and how, how dare they? Yeah. My buddy Andrew and I, we were on the school newspaper, and uh, we made a point to uh, put Mr. T into the paper mm -hmm. frequently. We just have him, like, up on, like, the masthead and mm -hmm. stuff. And, like, with out of context, no explanation, mm -hmm. just to, like... Uh, keep him around. Well, yeah, like, so, so he, he, like, disappeared for a while, at least to me. I mean, obviously he didn't disappear. Obviously, you know, he's still living his life, you know, doing his thing. Um, uh, but, um, I, like, I guess, like, the next time I saw him was, like, Neil Adams did, like, a Mr. T comic book. So he, it was kind of, I guess that was, like, no, I don't know that. the way he was trying to, like, sort of come back is, like, use sort of comics and maybe get this comic made into, like, a cartoon or a TV show or a movie or something. Uh, and then that didn't really happen. And then you started seeing him as this sort of like, like ironically, you'd see him sort of like, oh, remember, like, like kitsch, yeah. like 80s kitsch, like, oh, remember the 80s, weren't the 80s so crazy, so crazy. And then here's Mr. T as to kind of like embody like the excesses yes. of the 80s or whatever, whatever. And, uh, you know, like, I, again, I was happy to see him. Oh, I'm you always know? happy to see him. Happy to see him. But like. Uh, you know, I, I think, you know, uh, you know, he's more than, that. you know, like, you know, it's yeah. like, you know, kind of like, like, um, I don't think he's like cut from the same cloth as like, you know, the Brady Bunch or something, no. you know, like, like, I think he really, um, you know, like, again, like watch Rocky three, if you haven't seen it or if you haven't seen it in a while, watch Rocky three. It's, it's, it's amazing performance and, and he really steals the show and, um, like g good on, um, Sylvester Stallone for like getting him that role because I'm, I'm sure it was a um like it wasn't a no-brainer it was it was something you had to fight for yeah uh you know mr t and, and again there was that kind of hard line of like oh you're a tv actor you're not a movie actor yeah you know? and, and so i like i think it was great and and um you know shows you know like we're talking like still still in his eye for talent but um he like mr t needs to um be in more things now and like in like somehow we get is there a way um do you like a quentin tarantino treatment or something like in that's like, that's a great point like uh, and i'm sure tarantino has a, a mr t thing or, or maybe maybe not maybe maybe mr t isn't his era maybe mr t was like a little too late for for tarantino so maybe like you know the next tarantino or something, like uh, i mean it would have to be somebody like around around like my age or something like me Maybe it's me. You know, maybe we write the uh, the the total recall, uh, Mr. T vehicle. vehicle. I'm sure he has. Like, because Pee Wee Herman, like every so often, you know, you hear about like a Pee Wee Herman like vehicle, and then and then he did have he had that like stage show, and then he had that uh, Net Netflix, Netflix 
thing. So like, yeah, yeah, Mr. T. I mean, again, like like an eighteen. I never saw the the eighteen movie that came with like uh, Brad Bradley. Oh uh, yeah, I I did see that one, and uh, I no, don't Mr. remember T. Mr. Cameo. T. No, okay. I didn't. I didn't see him in there. And I think disgraceful, the other... disgraceful. <laughs> I'm like, how dare you? Yeah, I didn't see him in that. That's how how Mr. T get on your radar? Because like like you're a little bit younger than me, so Mr. T just once again like. He was just there, mm -hmm. like he just appeared in in my life, like through the through the TV. And I I think it was, uh, I might have been Rocky three. Rocky three, Rocky yeah. Rocky I guess that, that's that's probably like the most enduring, you know, because because like the A team, it's so much fun. Like watching an old A team episode, oh, it is man. so much fun. But like Rocky three is is like a classic. Like it, it is it is there, and 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 the fact that it's still a like living uh, series, kind of you know makes it like a more you know accessible yeah. thing like uh the in the a team too it would be the combination it's more rocky three but like the a team is right there too i i think maybe like part of maybe what made mr t go away is um like sometimes with a tv series especially like a hit tv series you can like outstay your welcome yeah. and like a team does like fade over time. Like like each season, it does like it does you know jump the shark you know several times. The, he, I, you gotta I miss those worm's eye view shots of like the van draft. There's like the cameras like buried down the dirt and like to... yeah you got it. I mean um, like the vehicle was so important in the '80s. You got the the, uh, the Knight Rider uh, uh, kit. You know you got the A team van. Yeah. Same colors. You know bl black and red. You know this great. Um, this great color scheme. The uh, we um, need to create a, a vehicle for Mr. T. Yeah. To to shine on. Yeah, that, um, you got the the hard castle and McCormick car. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that's a, like <laughs> the, the eighteen. It's got to be the eighteen too. Like I was obsessed with like hard castle McCormick and anything with a vehicle with a car. Yeah. The car was so or not, vehicle or helicopter. Helicopter. Like you got Air Airwolf, Wolf. Blue, Blue Thunder, and then um, and then. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, Magnum PI. Magnum PI. Uh, uh, you know, another Total Recall uh, regular. Regular. Uh, 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 Tom, Tom Selleck. Selleck. Uh, who Selling we, we uh, roasted. We, we roasted uh, our uh, reverse <laughs> mortgages yeah. for elderly people. So, like, he had multiple vehicles. Because, like, there was his cool red car that yes. he drove around in. And then TC flew this cool helicopter. You know, so oh, multiple like, great And I, th I think there was a boat. Uh, in, in, in TC's the helicopter, I prefer... That mall, that McDonald. Dun I was obsessed with like Airwolf the helicopter. We got to do a show on eighties vehicles. Yeah, that, yeah, a top ten a, list or something. Top ten uh, helicopters, helicopters or top ten vehicles. Vehicles. I like that bubble, like yeah. helicopter, just because of TC's copter and Magnum PI. Um, I watched a ton of that. Um, the Fall Guy. Fall Guy with the blue pickup. It basically had like Bigfoot without the monster yes! tires. And I would get excited because he would like somehow power jump like there'd be a he'd like power jump the car mm -hmm. and like dukes of hazard mm -hmm. like they're legit they would always like i don't know why they're working on the road they got the ramp the dirt right, yeah. set up perfect to jump anything with a vehicle like um i had the a team van like matchbox car i had that too i had i had i i would have liked to have had like the big one that the action figures could fit in but but yeah i had the little matchbox one and then i had the uh, i had the night rider Matchbox too. I had the General Lee Matchbox. You That's know. awesome. Like, uh, I got yeah from my cousins. I would get a lot of their toys. I had the uh, Evil Knievel like uh, motorcycle. Like the, you don't happen to still have that, do you? Um, I, I gotta look for it. Cause like okay, the the Evil Knievel motorcycle. That's before my time. Like I didn't. I I you know wasn't old enough for that. Um, but like, watching the commercials for that on YouTube and stuff, it looks like an amazing toy. Like that it was motorized so awesome. action looks so great. And um, like, I'd love to get my hands on one and just see like what that motorized action is like, because it looks awesome. And and like I've, everything I've heard is that it was like the greatest toy ever made. And the only reason they, they didn't keep making it was because, uh, um, you know, uh, Evil Knievel's fall from grace, basically. <laughs> let's, just, let's just say that. And, um, but, um, and, but then for Toy Story 4, there's like an Evil Knievel character. He's like the Canadian Evil Knievel. Yeah, I think Duke. it's voiced by Keanu Reeves. Okay, I think. <laughs> okay, and his name's like Duke Nukem or something. Duke Duke, Cra Duke Crash or Duke. Yeah, that sounds Duke right. And um, it looks like, and so they have a toy of that. And I'm thinking of getting the toy. I, like I don't know if it has the same same uh, 
a me mechanism as, as the evil can evil. I uh, I gotta find it's I, it's probably buried somewhere deep uh, in like a box somewhere. I'm gonna look locate okay. it, but but I remember it was very sat very satisfying, right? Cool, the, the, and it took off. Yeah, awesome. like like great. Um, pro it probably because it had like lead in it, <laughs> and maybe some asbestos too, and so like that just made it work extra. Yeah, good. it made it extra good. I'm like, why are these microscopic glass shards <laughs> blowing into my sock? You know, there's nothing like lead gears. The way the lead gears lock together, um, and and they've recently uh, made sort of like a uh, like a like a. Um, collector's item kind of like they, they've recently made like a re-release of the um of of the evil knievel cycle and it's like 40 bucks or something but i'm thinking oh, about I'm thinking about grabbing it just to see but again it's like well is it gonna be as good as it, it doesn't have lead in lead. it it doesn't have asbestos in it maybe it's not gonna be as good <laughs> the um it has the mer a mercury like <laughs> right yeah <laughs> yeah that, that you like put in your mouth yeah. <laughs> it's got a mercury key or something like but I, I mean, you know, we're going off on one of our uh, one of our brilliant tangents. <laughs> but like, just to like, just to get into the specifics of like the uh, Rocky Three performance, Mister. Like, first of all, the it's such a great character because he like turns everything on his head, and it's like he's like uh, you know Carl Weathers Apollo Creed character, but then times ten, like because he's he's like you know doing sort of like the Muhammad Ali trash talk. To Rocky, but he's getting really personal yeah. and really intense, and like, and like it seems like, like he will like just like murder <laughs> Rocky in in one of these like press conferences, and he's like he's like telling Rocky like you know I'm gonna take I'm gonna take your belt I'm gonna take your lady <laughs> like like you're not you're not uh, you're not pleasing your your your, your lady right I'm gonna I'm gonna like, do it I'm a know, real I'm gonna, man or I'm something. a real man I'm gonna do the job you can't do <laughs> yeah. he, and uh, he keeps telling uh, he, yeah, yeah, he keeps man. telling him to he's like shut up old man <laughs> yeah yeah he like really just like steals the shit like great character great great act actor great great you know just like every great script. It just it just like all comes together like T total package and like when you see him on the screen, you want him to be on there more. It's like he yeah, has, it's electric. He could could uh you, you know little use a little more screen time. I love your idea of uh, um, doing a a Lang. Actually. Yeah, gonna, yeah. Continue the Lang the Lang series. Like what you know what's 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 he been up to? What's his what's his you know family been up to? And his character arc is really like interesting too because he is like, um, it, this must like this must have, I don't know like it, I mean it's before I ever heard of Mike Tyson but maybe Mike Tyson was around at that time but he does like it, it does feel like Mike Tyson where it's like you know boxing has all its um, traditions and all this and that and then somebody comes along who's just like a force of nature and, and just like runs yeah, over the whole demolishes thing. like turns turns everything on its ear and just like dominates it like like he definitely reminds me of that and it and uh his uh you know great outfits great look great magnetism yeah and and um you know they talk about, like they talk about like you know wardrobe and things like that and then some people talk about like oh in this movie you know oh, the budget was so bad i i had to bring my own clothes and stuff but i get the feeling that uh, in a lot of these you know you know scenes and things like he's bringing his own clothes. Oh yeah, yeah. like they're like Mr. They're like Mr. T. Please bring your own. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Stallone like came up with like he saw Mr. T do like an interview for one of the like the bouncer competitions or some like boxing t some television special. Mr. T was with Brian Gumble and like gave like a like a post game interview and it inspires Stallone to do his lineup for Pity, uh, Pity the Fool from Rocky 3 I think so like Stallone does, like Stallone takes credit for, I think he does like he he claims that he wrote I Pity the Fool yeah that, that's an interesting claim to look into I mean Stallone claims a lot of things and and you know there's like the thing of like you know he you know he wrote the script to uh, to Rocky, Rocky which is like this you know amazing script and uh, you know, and there's the joke of like, no, he actually like found the script to Rocky in the backseat of a cab. <laughs> there's like no way he wrote that. Like, okay, I, I believe you wrote the script to uh, you know Saturday Night Fever Part Two, Staying Alive, but I don't believe you wrote the script to Rocky. <laughs> the action movie Cobra that he was in, where uh, I don't know if it was like the the it was based on 
like a novel or something or and Stallone when they reprinted the novel he wanted them to like I don't know if Stallone wrote the screenplay or something based off the novel but then when the novel came out he's like hey can I I want to put my name as like I wrote the book or something mm -hmm. that's, so, that's, a, that's a move <laughs> like, that's a move like a, a Stallone like power play or something mm -hmm. uh, great book can I put my name on <laughs> It'll help sales. It'll help sales. His uh, mom, uh, Jackie Stallone, died recently. And again, if, if like you watch like the Howard Stern show or listen to the Howard Stern show, she was like a staple on there. And like you would hear his parents on there, and they are characters. Oh like, my you, gosh. Can, you can imagine like what it, what it's like <laughs> growing up in that house. Uh, but we're talking about somebody's mother. Oh yeah, on the Mr. T episode. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> well, I'm so sorry. I'm so we're, we're sorry, uh, Mr. <laughs> T. Like on that episode where Howard, where Mr. T is on Howard Stern. I think Howard Stern makes some kind of joke about, like, you know, having sex with his mother or so. Or like, or like it's some kind of like inappropriate joke that Howard Stern makes about Ray Stern, and like, <laughs> Mr. T flips out, and like Stern's like, hey, like I'm not talking about your mom. I'm talking about my mom. You know, this is just, he's like, hey, and, and she's like, I don't care. You know, you don't. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like it's it, it feels like you know like. You know, they did some research, and, and then it's like, That's okay, this funniest. is going to push Mr. T's butt. That, it's so funny that they, like, d looked into it, and they're like, okay, this is what's going to push him over the edge. And the, the Mr. T cartoon, um, I feel like it's it started this thing of where you have the cartoon based on, like, a real guy, and then at the end, he shows up, like, in the flesh, like, in, you know, live action, and then, like, gives you some lesson, tells you some, like, life lesson. And so then that was like repeated, you know, that became like a, a trope in cartoons. Like there was the Chuck Norris and the Co Karate Commandos, oh, yeah. which was also like a, a cartoon that Jack Kirby worked on. Um, and it was like Chuck Norris would show up at the end and, and you know, give you some like life lesson. But, like, I think Mr. T's the first, I mean, you could maybe make the claim that like the Beatles Yellow Submarine, where it's like this whole animated movie of the Beatles. And then they show up at the end, you know, in person and, they show up at the end in person and you know perform uh, a song but um you know they're not teaching you a life lesson at the end, so I, I don't i don't think they they quite you know do what mr t did for he's like fools you must pity them he had like a message or like a number of messages that were important to him that he you know incorporated into his work um you know of his own volition and, and maybe to his own detriment too like it kind of um, like undercuts some of you know like you know what, yeah. like his you know like the sort of image he's trying to protect. it undercuts the image but it, like it was like these these were important issues to him like um, you know a respect for your mother but then also like um, like I know he, he had like a strong like anti-drug you know message you know yeah if it, I mean and cared about kids like kids were important to him and uh, you know they were like you, you know um like I, like, I don't think it's an accident that, like, these different vehicles that he's involved in, um, you know, and, and make him some kind of, like, mentor figure, yeah. you know? I, I get inspired. When I see him, to, like, mm -hmm. giving advice, I still, like, get pumped up by mm -hmm. him. You know, popularized the Mohawk. Yeah, like, Travis Bickle had it first, but it's kind of like, it went mainstream with Mr. T. Like, he brought the Mohawk to the mainstream. I tried to, you know, put moose in my hair and, like, make it into a... Yeah, I would have, I would have liked the full mohawk, like back, you know, back in the Mr. T era. Yeah, you know, that that's that's a tough one to, uh, you know, sell your parents <laughs> on, unless like like Arnold Drummond, you take matters into your own hands. <laughs> I uh, thought like anyone with like ripped jeans was super cool, and like one earring. Yeah, the the socks pulled up and the Chuck Taylors and so, like that, that was a look. I think you know that was that was an '80s look, and and these. And, you know, maybe part of why, um, you know, he sort of went away um, is that, you know, when you make a strong stylistic statement, it's, like, really easy to become yesterday's news. Like, like, like it's really easy to, to go from, like, when it's, when it's that bold a statement, a couple years later, it looks, you know, pretty, pretty laughable. Like, like you know, a, a white striped socks pulled up high did not endure it didn't it didn't make it all the way to the end of the 80s you know yeah we're, we're gonna get to work on that um 
that like Mr. T comeback uh, script. Yeah. That you know that like like don't you just love it when those kind of things happen? I love when, it. Like I like, love I, it. I, like the Pee Wee Herman thing. I was really happy to see that. Love that, it. You know and and uh, uh, you know when there's John Travolta in Pulp Fiction. John Travolta in Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think of things that happened in in real time because it was kind of like. You know, John Travol that John Travolta in Pulp Fiction thing was kind of, it wasn't like, I was like, oh, gee, it would be nice to see John Travolta in a it, really cool vehicle. It just kind of happened. happened. And, and you knew about, like, I knew about it in retrospect. But, like, when you see these things, in, it happened in real time. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I mean, you know, just like, uh, what's it, like, uh, Richard Hatch from... I'll survive? No, not from survive. Richard oh. Hatch from Battlestar Galactica. Oh, for years... Better he was edit that out. Yeah. That's my <laughs> lowest point on uh, the Total Recall shit. Um, but Richard Hatch from uh, from Battlestar Galactica, for, for years, he was trying to get Battlestar Galactica to come back, and he would write scripts and this, and, and, and shoot... Um, like demos and pilots and sizzle reels like on his own dime to try and get and go to comic cons and stuff try to get like a like a, a return of, of Battlestar Galactica and then and then like a return of Battlestar Galactica happens like without him like it happens it happens without him but like and then they figure out a way to incorporate him into it and oh, like that kind of stuff is kind of cool when like you know or, or Tron Legacy or something oh, you yeah. know like like one of them uh we were talking about in our um in our uh, Total Recall, uh, Sean Connery tribute is that like he, Sean Connery wrote his own uh, James Bond movie where it was going to be like this was going to be the return of James Bond and, yeah. he, and he wrote it and it ended up not happening. But the um, T two <laughs> T two the return of Mister T. T. Well, I mean, you could do like again the the Lang series, and that's that's in Sylvester Stallone's hand. If he, and I'm sure he's already like I don't I don't think we're breaking any new ground saying there should be a Lang. So I, it, it's probably in his mind. You know? you, yes, the, I'm sure he's had that meeting. You got, yeah, he's like. Uh, that's like one of the things they say is, is like that's like one of the truisms is that the business gets tired of you before the audience gets tired of you. So like I I, th I don't think I, I think Mr. T went away before like we were ready to to. Uh, we weren't ready like, to we say goodbye. We weren't. We, like we want to we want to back in, in some some kind of cool thing. So yeah, it would be like like a Rocky sequel or spinoff. Um, or like like an A team, yeah. Like like a dark A team reimagining slash sequel where it's like you know horrible things have happened to like all the A team characters, and then you know Mr. T is like like he's got to bring the team back together or whatever. Like it would be like Robin and Marion or Dark Knight Returns, but you know like with B. A. Baracus at the yeah. center, of, you know, and it's like he visits you know George Pappard's grave or or he visits uh, you know Hannibal. Uh, Hannibal's grave. The B A team. The, the B A team. Okay, there we go. The B A. You know, B A. As a kid, it was like on the show. B A. Oh, what's B A stand for? And and they'd say on the A team, they say, Oh, B A. It stands for bad attitude. But it's like now, it's like no, B A is badass. Like yeah. anytime somebody says B A, it's badass. So it's like so funny that this like a network television character whose name is badass, badass Barack. That's so good. So yeah, the B A team. I, I think we got a winner there, and then. Um, Another one could be like the toughest man in the world part two, where like he's the defending toughest man in the world champion, and um, and it would be kind of like Rocky three, where like R Rocky's gotten soft because he's it, like he's gotten too used to, to the the good life, and so it would be like uh, Bruce has gotten soft. He's gotten too used like he's been he's been the reigning toughest man in the world like forever, and so like you know now some some you know up and comer you know he's comes along, is going to topple his. Or, or he could be like a former toughest man in the world who's like training, you know, the, the new guy. But there's, there's a, there's a, or DC Cab. Oh, we talk about DC Cab. Oh yeah, my talk gosh. about DC Cab. DC Cab. That's like, you know, he stole the show in Rocky Three. DC Cab's like a true, a Joel Schumacher directed Mr. T vehicle, and uh, he's pretty much the star. I mean, it has a lot of like. There's a lot of stand-up comics in there, like Bill Maher, and like uh, I think um, there's oh, you also got the the Barbarian Brothers in there. <laughs> well, it, like I think it was like it was an ensemble. Ensemble, but like again, Mr. T just pulls the focus, and you look at like the poster. poster. It's not an ensemble. Po it's like Mr. <laughs> T like flexing in the center. You know? It's um a Drew uh, Drew Struzan did that poster, yeah. and like he's done so many iconic posters. 
But I always put the DC his DC cab poster in like my top three. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's a good one. He's ripping the door off the cab. I really do like again, like you know, it, it, I think it does maybe come from wrestling or something. But I do like this idea of like the real life superhero, and like Mr. T was like the real life superhero. Yeah. Um, yeah, Joel, Mr. T once again, Rocky Three, and he's directed by Joel Schumacher. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he's directed by Stallone, directed by Joel Schumacher. Ooh. Like Mr. Mr. T's wrestling career, so that like yeah. maybe that because like this was a time when like you know in the eighties like wrestling was huge you know you got Hulk Hogan and all that stuff but it was still kind of like disreputable you know yeah. it was like it, like the the, the um like the the lar you know the, the gatekeepers or whatever kind of like looked down on it yeah so like I don't know if maybe that derailed his career like or maybe it had already you know gone gone somewhere because like I can never remember. When things are happening, like yeah, when is Rocky Three yeah. hat taking? It's like eighty three maybe, and I can't remember when the run for A Team occurred. Yeah, right. And uh, you know, um, we mentioned um, what, when was you think that strongest man in the world? Toughest movie? man in the world. Toughest man yeah, might have been like 80, 84, 85, <laughs> something like that. Um, but uh, so like his wrestling career, like I mean, I like I remember seeing that in like real time too, like him and Hulk Hogan and. Uh, you know, like screaming at somebody in a hallway, beating, be beating people <laughs> oh, up, and, and again, kind of like, is this real? Is it, what's going on here? I love, I, yeah, it's like you're a real life superhero. It's like uh, Mr. T, he's you know, in the halls of a wrestling backstage wrestling match, and he's got superhuman strength, or he's uh -huh. like, strong enough to rip a door off of a cab. It's like he was, he was um, like Hulk Hogan's tag team partner, and I feel like. In, like, like that that he was like second fiddle to Hulk Hogan, which I think was a mistake. Yeah, you know, definitely. Like, you know, Hulk Hogan's like was the, one of the huge biggest draws in, in wrestling, and you forget him. He's overshadowed by Stallone and uh, Mr. T in, in Rocky. It's like yeah, I mean, talk Hulk about Hulk Hogan like, is pretty great in in, he is, in Rocky, and um, Rocky is like really scared of Hulk Hogan and like and, and again it's like you know oh wrestling like they, they they don't say like oh it's just fake or whatever like they, they treat like wrestling like it's a real thing and that like like that St Stallone might die in this match <laughs> and you see them paired up like I always wonder because I know like a lot of these guys like they lie about their height like like yeah. Schwarzenegger's not as tall as like his stats say and stuff like uh you know it's a lot of optical illusions and so, like, I thought that was probably it with, like, Hulk Hogan, but, like, you see him in Rocky Three, like, you, you know, the, these, like, medium shots where you see each of them from, like, head to toe yeah. facing each other, and, like, he is a giant He's huge. compared to Stallone. Yeah, like, when I read their stats, like, online, it's, like, Stallone, it, they're squeezing in, like, a, like, a, like two inches. Mm -hmm. And, like, I think I saw Dolph Lundgren's height and I, I don't think he's as tall. He looks like he's like nine feet tall in the movies. Yeah, I think he's like drastically shorter. I think like, think like in like Schwarzenegger's case and stuff, uh, and and Lou Ferrigno. Like, if you want to be a bodybuilder, there's like a certain amount of like height where like when you get past a certain point, it becomes like counterproductive. Like it's really hard to to like build that kind of that muscle like on like too tall a frame. Like, yeah, it kind of is like if if you're like under a certain height. But but then they want. The reputation of being these like monsters you know these like literal hulks oh, okay. and so they have to yeah like kind of add a couple a couple inches i i start wearing my tom cruise apple box <laughs> lifts and and those those like wrestling magazines and stuff uh, not wrestling those like bodybuilding magazines yeah were like they were you know oh yeah like kind of like just you know it was like circus stuff it was like uh you know like overblown you know like k fave hype you know i can't wait till um we do our pumping iron, the total yeah, recall. Yeah, we're gonna do a pumping, pumping iron, iron episode. episode. But it is like, like Mr. T is like, so, like I don't know if he was ever, but he would be on like one of those like reality shows in the '90s where like you know everybody's in a house together, and it would be like you know uh, Paul Rubens, Mr. T, uh, Emmanuel Lewis, uh, Ricky Schroeder, like all these, you know, all these like '80s, oh, so like like it's kind of like um, you know like an, an '80s wax museum or something. It's one of my favorite holidays of the year. Yeah. Yeah, he's giving. giving, and we're gonna we're gonna get that um, Mr. T vehicle going, you know. And, and, yeah. and if if, if uh, you know if he doesn't feel like you know he's up to like you know performing in one of these, we can make an animate and just get his get his voice in there. Make yeah. make that that could be the other route is like 
a sequel to the uh, Mr. T cartoon. Like, like, and, and again, like, um, the way they kind of like bring back, uh, you know, like, like Netflix has done like She-Ra and stuff. Yeah. And, and they get these like amazing, like, you know, they get this writer's room going where you get like these incredible stories going and then, and then, and then you, you know, you produce it and, and, uh, it's like a, like a, a really, um, smart continuation of the Mr. T cartoon. I'm that could be it. Here for that. <laughs> that Mr. T cartoon. It's like, oh, it's nice seeing that again. Uh, like Saturday Night Live when they have Saturday TV Funhouse. I think they did like oh, yeah. at, at least one episode where it's the Mr. T, like it was the Mr. T cartoon. Yeah. And he would um, have his sort of like truisms and advice and, and lessons, but they would get increasingly absurd, you know, as <laughs> though like he's had some break from reality. Um, that, that reminds me too. I forgot. Uh, I loved his appearances on, the, on uh, Late Night with Conan O'Brien. Yeah. Him and like Mr. T went like apple picking in like an orchard, mm -hmm. and then like they, I loved the um, those bits that Conan would do would be like secrets. <laughs> It'd be like Takai confessions, or like T T secrets, <laughs> and it have like you know a celebrity. They'd be in like a like a the actor would be in like an interrogation room, and they'd be like they'd say a punchline or something. You know, you plan for tea's giving all year, and then it's it's there, it's and, there gone. and gone. Yeah, so uh, you know, load up Look, on, on the on the Mr. T uh, vehicles. I'm gonna be gorging this tea's giving. I'm going to be taking my belt out if he loops, because <laughs> of all that tea content I'll be consuming. Yeah, I gotta I gotta see if there is some kind of like some kind of like collection of the, of that uh, the cartoon. You know, I'm gonna watch be, the cartoon, watch Rocky Three, watch uh, Toughest Man in the Toughest World, Toughest Man in the World, watch. Uh, um, yeah, his appearances. DC Cab. I gotta watch it because DC Cab. When DC Cab came out. It was like that was like the one like R-rated uh, Mr. <laughs> T. Thing. So like I I wasn't able to when I was at the height of like my Mr. T fandom. I was not able to check out DC Cab. It was uh, the R rating was restrictive and I, it was restricted <laughs> and I wasn't you know so like I it didn't I did I didn't uh, connect with that the way I connected with these other things. But yeah, I got I got to revisit DC well, Cab. Yeah, DC Cab. Great. I need to get. Like a nice big printout of that Drew Struzan um, uh, DC Cab poster. Yeah, I, I follow Drew Struzan on on Twitter, and like he's always like post like he'll post like you know like here's a shot of like the original art to like uh, this or that. So I'll, I'll have to like comb through there. Yeah, see, see, if, if, see if, he, he did a, if if it's on there. You know we've uh, you know we we raise our glasses to we to Mr. T and uh, and to many more great teas great givings. Teas givings. Uh, happy teas giving.